Having a physical disability and poor mental health is a battle many are fighting and winning. This is Hashtag I Got This. In this episode of Hashtag I Got This, losing independence as a senior, an energetic university professor, as well as a busy farm wife and mother, are handed an unexpected disability later in life. Both women suffer deeply before discovering the power of possibility. Dr. Jody Grant had it all. She was living in Jamaica, her dream vacation spot, loving her job as a university professor, and working on a literacy project with inner city schools. She also rented part of her villa to tourists and helped out at a nearby stable. Riding horses was a hobby she adored. Jody was happy, but life was hectic. And that's when an intuitive friend gave her some advice. One of the things that she pointed out to me was that I was overworked and that I needed to change or something would make me change. Then, a freak accident altered her fast-paced life forever. I opened the gate and then I got in the car and drove it through, got out and went to close the gate. However, I had put the car in park, but I hadn't pulled the parking brake and the vehicle was on a slope. So it came backwards toward me. And so I thought, well, as the car gets closer, I'll just jump in and pull the parking brake or somehow stop it. Only it didn't work that way. The car came back and it caught me across my waist. So I was in between the car and the gate and the car kept coming and squashing me and the gate wasn't giving way. And I was screaming and no one was coming. Eventually someone heard Jody's cries and turned off her car. And I immediately fell backwards. I didn't have any, anything from the waist down. And I didn't know what was going on other than the pain was intolerable. Essentially, the car crushed me right across my abdomen. Her injuries were so severe for both local hospitals, so she was airlifted to Kingston, the capital city of Jamaica. Jody says doctors tried to fix her back and heal her abdomen, but they just didn't have the resources. Her new life in a wheelchair had begun. The pain, the loss, and the feeling of helplessness was almost too much to take. My son Buki came to visit me in the hospital in Jamaica. All I wanted from him was his glasses. I kept saying, Buki, give me your glasses. Give me your glasses, give them to me. And he refused. And he said, I know what you want to do with them. And no, you can't have them because I was going to smash his glasses and use them to cut my wrists. I was so depressed and so, so much pain and hated being alive so much that that's all I wanted to do. Even though her thoughts were that dark, Jody made the decision to live for now. Like I could leave and go back home to my villa and likely die within the month. And that's when I thought, well, I could go to Miami, I could go to Denver because of my family, or I could come back to Saskatoon, and lo and behold, that's what I did. Jody has her doctorate in literacy and was teaching at the University of Saskatchewan before she left the snow behind forever. She thought to teach and retire in Jamaica. Now she felt forced to leave behind her entire world to return to Saskatoon for the health care she desperately required. I was in the hospital for a year and then I went to rehab and it was really quite great because I actually took a couple of steps. Um, rehab was wonderful, but then I had a relapse. Um, the infection came back and so I was back in the hospital for another year and back to rehab, but I couldn't do the same things. I was really depressed. Um, I 
there were two sides of it really. There was the part of me that kept on going, and then the part of me that was the black cloud that life was terrible, and I didn't want to live anymore because I wanted to be in Jamaica. I wanted to ride horses. I wanted to have my villa. I wanted all those things that I had lost. I wanted to be able to walk. Losing that ability was so hard. Jody could no longer live on her own. She moved into Sherbrooke Community Center, a long-term facility. It had everything she needed for her physical health, but that dark cloud just wouldn't lift. I, I couldn't see any way forward. My life, I wanted it to be over so badly. I just wanted it over. I wanted the pain to stop. I wanted that I couldn't walk to stop. I wanted everything to stop. There was one period where all of my support systems were basically gone. My therapist was gone for vacation. It was Christmas. Nobody was around. I felt very lost and alone. And I had this little bottle of my pills that I had saved. And so I took them. The nurse had come to give me my pills for that hour. I said, I think I better tell you what I did. And I told her about the pills. And then they shipped me off to the hospital and they wouldn't let me come back here until I said I wasn't going to try it again. She scared herself. She still wasn't happy, but she decided to hang in there. And to this day, she's glad she did. Because the life she thought was over was about to begin again. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is hashtag I got this. Jody Grant lost her will to live after a car accident left her paralyzed from the waist down. I was in a bad spot and I didn't know any other way to get out of it. This once active university professor with a doctorate in literacy, all set to retire in her Jamaican villa, had become a broken suicidal woman living in a Saskatoon care home. But then, <laughs> Jody met Carrie Albert, who had an idea for a school literacy program that sparked a small glow deep within Jody's heart. Once I was here, it was two years here before I started to see anything hopeful. And the real change came when I, when I met Carrie and she started iGen and I was involved from the beginning. And that revolutionized my way of thinking about life. iGen is an intergenerational classroom Students attend classes at Sherbrooke Community Center where Jody lives with a couple of hundred other residents who need high-level health care. It's been six years since she helped Carrie Albert create the iGen program. So we're going to focus in on page 163. Jody's going to read for us. Jody has been reading to students and healing her mental health every day since. Chapter 35. My dad was tired from standing so long at Best Buy, so I said I'd go. I really missed having a job, a meaningful job, preferably in literacy reading. So what Carrie was offering, what she was offering was perfect because I was going to be able to read to kids. And that to me is a joy just a pure joy from heaven or from wherever it comes from. It was wonderful. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for iGen. <laughs> Carrie Albert says iGen wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Jody. I do believe that Jody is one of the most remarkable people I've ever met. And without her, this program would not be the same. 
we would not have that heartbeat pumping every single day. We would not have her encouragement, her graciousness, her, um, her spark, her spunk, her personality, just her complete love for the kids. They are not afraid to stay here when they first come because Jody showers them with love and attention. Jody has told me that the feeling of meaning and of belonging and of not being alone and having that those connections with people every single day have been one of the greatest gifts of her life. So to me that is a message that kids need to hear, for sure, that I need to hear. Sometimes people who are struggling don't see that they may be more valuable to others than they realize. Jody is Carrie's inspiration. If you can get up, and you can't even get up on your own, you need someone to get you up. If you can get up and get your hair done and put on your lipstick and come downstairs with a big smile on your face and show up for, for this, for this project, for these kids, then I can do it too. And so she's really a wind beneath my wings for sure and has been all these years. With this disability, at first I felt it was limiting me. As the years passed and I found that it gave open doors, it gave me iGen, it gave me an opportunity to work meaningfully in that program. And it's not, not so much of a burden anymore. If I had ended it, I would have missed so much. The one thing that I've really come out of this with is an optimism that things will work out and I'm pretty happy with life. It's, it's a good thing and I'm interested to see what's going to happen next. From despair to unexpected joy, because Jody didn't give up, sometimes a loss later in life can be even more challenging. That's what an aging Mary Kaminsky faced with her eyesight. I grew up on the farm. Then I went to school to grade 11. I had to quit had to help out at home. Then I got married and I worked as a cashier for the OK economy for 32 years and had four kids. Always grew a garden. Always did all my own canning. And I loved to sew. Yes, I was independent, very independent. That's why it was so hard for Mary as she started losing her eyesight in her mid-60s. She gave up driving, sewing, reading. It all became too difficult and frustrating to do. As macular degeneration stole her eyes, it also took her confidence. I worried about what happens later on in life, and uh, I was scared to face it. A lot of my friends would be doing things and yes, sometimes they didn't understand why I couldn't do it, and I had a hard time explaining because, well, I can't see. Those times uh, are angry times. And yes, you know, I will sort of hit bottom and start crying and go home and have my cry. This life change had Mary hard, and while she's glad she had her sight as long as she did, she found it frightening to lose her vision at the same time her body was aging. I was always scared to walk. I was tripping over my own feet. I'm all right in my own surroundings. You know, once I get to know my surroundings, it's okay I fall because I know where I'm falling. But if you're falling and you don't know where bottom is, it's not, it's not so good. She relied strongly on her husband for over a decade until he unexpectedly passed away and she had to face the darkness alone. Definitely after he went, it was, it was much harder. But I knew I was alone. I knew I had to do it myself, so. And then I think it helped because the kids always told me not to give up. If you're going to give up, you know, you're not going to do, it's not going to be easy. Mary took that to heart and rediscovered her inner strength. If I quit, you know, it's no returning. 
so I'm always fighting. Maybe that's why I don't look 88. <laughs> oh, did we forget to mention, Mary is now almost 90 years old. Ace, ace of hearts. She lives in a senior's complex where she's made new friends. She takes part in activities. She's given herself things to look forward to. Dave Nelson from the Canadian Mental Health Association says that's exactly what Mary should be doing. He says a big change like this later in life can be a difficult transition to cope with. Seniors have often the same kinds of problems of isolation and poverty and so on that people who are younger and have a disability have. When you are that person who has a disability, doesn't have much money and you're also a senior, it's kind of like a double or a triple whammy. And so it's important that services that might be there to either come to you and provide some, some friendship and socialization, or that you get out, even better that you get out. Even if you go out and play bingo a couple of times a week with a group of friends, that's, that keeps a lot of people going. It's something to look forward to. It's something to get you out of the house. It's something to not just sit there and veg and, and feel depressed. Getting out has certainly helped keep Mary's mental health positive. And what she has lost in vision, she's gained in patience and grit. She no longer lets daily frustrations and worries get her down, even as her vision deteriorates. Today, she's blind in the right eye with some vision in the bottom of her left eye, so she picks up her magnifying glass to read what she can, albeit slowly and often repetitively. She even started sewing again. And it's a lot of perseverance you know, you just don't give up. You keep trying and, well, sometime it'll take me every bit to an hour before I thread a needle, but I just don't give up. Even though she can't do it the same as she used to, Mary never thought she'd sew or read anything again. And while she still has her days, don't get her wrong, now Mary has found ways to lift herself out of the blues. You never say no to anything, you just try try. Doesn't matter how old you are, just keep trying. No excuses, even when you're pushing 90. Recently, Mary tried something new she didn't expect to fall in love with, and many wonder how the heck she even does it. Stay tuned. We'll be back with hashtag I got this. Welcome back. This is Hashtag I Got This. It bothers me very much when I look in the mirror and uh, I only see half a face on myself. Mary Kaminsky doesn't have much vision left. She's blind in the right eye with some sight on the bottom of her left eye. So if I'm reading and there's a word, I will see the first two alphabets and then I don't see and then kind of move like this I see the the last two or three uh, alphabets but in in between it's void it's frustrating but Mary says don't give up try something new instead so this 88 year old grandmother took the sight she does have to do just that after a friend encouraged her to take up art I didn't think I would want to do it but then she was enrolled in a class and I thought well why don't I go so I went with her and I just fell in love with painting I focus on the picture on exactly the part I'm painting that's all I will see because if I start looking around like the vision is it's got blind spots it's color sometimes I, I can't make my colors I always mix up the navy and the black and what may look blue to you looks green to me. But art is art, and Mary loves creating it. She gets inspiration from pictures she comes across and then uses a projector to enlarge the image. When I'm feeling down and out, I go through my bunch of pictures and I'll, I'll always find something and I just grab the brush and paint and it's the cleaning up I don't like after. <laughs> From painting to cooking to spending time with friends and family, Mary has found ways to take her mind off her troubles. 
to be busy all the time is very important to me. But it's still important to have time for yourself. One of my sons will always say, oh, there's worse things can happen, you know. And he has a, a way of saying it that, yeah, I guess you're right. Sometimes what life takes away, it gives back with more meaning. For Mary <laughs> and for Jody, coping with an unexpected life change and as a senior didn't come easy. But these strong ladies pushed through and are living better lives because of that. So keep trying, no matter what your age, just like Mary. Hashtag, I got this. Hash, had? Oh, ho, ho, you've got to write it out. Okay, it's H-A-S-H-T-A-G. Yep. Hashtag, and I got it. Yes. <laughs> and so do you. Video production, Terry Yoland Productions. Integrated Described Video Specialist, M. Williams. Regional Content Specialist, Jim Crisco. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Director of Production, Kara Nye. Director of Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Programming and Production, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2020 AMI Accessible Media Inc.